after having had the pleasure of meeting you in such a banquet four years ago during your last visit to India. I am happily delighted to be able to discuss you again this time in the hall. Mr. President, you have made history thrice over today. By becoming the first U.S. President to raise our public day celebration as a guest of honor. By being the first U.S. President to visit India twice by the office and by holding a second summit level meeting in the shortest ever time span of four months. These milestones make me a truly historical visit while I am proud that we are creating history together. I am even more pleased that we are creating a brighter future together for our two countries and the world. The relationship between India and the United States is a special one. It is special because it is a relationship forced in the heads and minds of our two people. In the commercial life between our two business, in the exchange between our two scientists and engineers, and in the enduring linkage between the hundreds of our institutions. This is one relationship where the two governments can rightfully take pride in acknowledging that they have successfully put in place strategic partnership simply by following their lead shown by their Mr. President, it is this strong attraction and chemistry that explains why the people of both countries have always viewed each other as friends in almost every opinion world. It also explains why the relationship has consistently enjoyed bipartisan political support. This natural sense of kinship stems from the foundational values that both our people cherish deeply the values of individual liberty and freedom, democracy, diversity, and justice. These four values not only determine how we live and how we are governed as a nation, they also define our aspirations for the future and the vision of the world we want to be with to our children and grandchildren. Mr. President, it is this shared vision that forms the solid bedrock of our Muslim relationship. Today, our people are collaborating in practically every sphere of human activity, from jointly plumbing the depths of the ocean to understand the Indian motion, to join space exploration in Mars and everything that lies in between. But in a relationship like ours, that has infinite potential, there is so much more that we can and should do. Excellency, I am glad that both that our countries are deeply strategic security and defense cooperation to make our two countries, the region and the world, a safer place. The United States, in partnering us in our ambitious economic and developmental agenda through infrastructure development, clean energy solutions, 
investment, technology, developing information technology, education, and skilling. Your people are also working with us in setting up smart cities, fighting disease, and improving water, health, and sanitation. Mr. President, your presence at our Chinese Republic Day Parade tomorrow will demonstrate to the world the growing ties of friendship and trust that bind our two democracies closely. As we create new milestones in history and chart new destination points in our shared journey into the future, your visit, Mr. President, symbolizes both history and future in the Excellency, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, may I now request you to join me in raising a toast to the good health of His Excellency, President Obama, and Her Excellency. This is Mr. Obama to the continued prosperity and well-being of the United States and to creating new milestones that further strengthen the bonds of friendship and cooperation between India and the United States. Indians who built this nation through toil and tears and 
higher level. And at the end of the day, I told the band we'll play that hymn that was dear to the heart of Mahatma Gandhi. Abide with me as falls the even time. The darkest demons, the Lord would be alive. When other helpers fail and comforts flee, how love the helpless, all of mine would be. And so I close the toast. Through the great partnership of the